Welcome to Financial Female TV. I am Jennifer Lee, and during this series, I'll be your guide as we explore the world of money and finance. The goal of this series is financial empowerment for women. Some of the topics that we will explore in our episodes include assuming the financial reins after the death of a spouse, financial survival after a divorce, household budgeting, managing the affairs of elderly parents, educating children about money and finance, and exploring the many ways to pay for college, understanding the world of financial investment choices, and selecting your team of trusted advisors. So please, sit back and relax and let's begin our journey. On today's episode, we will speak with experts to explore the ways in which you can successfully assume the financial reins of your family, and if you are an entrepreneur, even your business. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Jackie Simmons. Jackie is a business coach helping women launch and build their own businesses. She is also the founder of the Empowering Women Network and the Women Entrepreneur Show, helping them succeed in business and also learning to master their finances. Welcome to the show, Jackie. This is Jackie's latest book, Your Path from Secret to Success. Jackie, the overall theme of your program is money, mindset, marketing, and mayhem. Can you tell us about that? Oh, absolutely. Love to. The fun part about it is that money is the currency that runs through our lives. It's the energy that holds everything together. And so that's what entrepreneurs need. They need the energy and they need the energy of money. So it all starts with that. And that's what the book is about. It pulls all of those pieces together. Now, you get into mindset, and that's what we're going to be talking about is the mindset of money today. But it goes into the marketing, and the marketing is nothing more than the discussion you have that sells you on what you want. All marketing is is an invitation to take action. So the book is about taking action, and so are the programs. And the last piece is the mayhem, because when you take action, you're going to have disorganization, discomfort, and a whole bunch of other disses and helping people be prepared for that because entrepreneurs have to take action and so they take more risk than most people. And that creates a lot of chaos sometimes. So that's what mayhem is. He's actually sort of the elephant in the room that will trample your business if you're not prepared to tame it. Why do you think that money is a challenging topic for many women? Oh, I think it's because we don't even talk about it growing up. I think that it's a challenging conversation and it doesn't happen in most households. Most people don't talk about money at all. You mentioned to me before the show four shoulds. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> yeah, they're from the, my concept of getting out of shouldville. I think all of us live a little too much in a little dark, dank place called shouldville where lives get lived and dreams go to die. So coming out of Shouldville was four steps for me, and the first one was money. It's a statement of absolutely no judgment, which is every penny I have ever spent was well spent, even if I would not spend a penny that way today. So that's the first should to get rid of, is I shouldn't have spent that money or I should have done something different with my money. Getting rid of that is important if you want to move forward with your finances, as you know, because mm -hmm. regret will keep people stuck. So the second should is about time. Every second I have ever lived was well lived. <sighs> Even if it's the last second I have to live, it's about having a life of no regrets. And the third should is about information. Every word I've ever read, every word a teacher ever said is useful. Even if I disagree with it, and the last one is about people and relationships because we have relationships not just with people but with our money. But with people, it's every person I have ever met enriched my life in some way, even if I would not choose to spend a second with them today. <laughs> and those four statements get people out of being hooked to a past that's discomfort, that has discomfort in it, and into being able to take action and move forward. 
Jackie, what does it really take to master money? To master money starts with just being comfortable talking about it. It's about having comfortable conversations with money. It's about creating a trust relationship, both with the people on your team, the people who are going to be guiding you with spending, saving, investing, whatever. But more importantly, having a comfortable relationship with your money, with yourself. And that's hard to do. Back to that first beginning of the question, which is, why don't we talk about money? We weren't modeled how to have a good conversation around money. You know, um, just play with, we'll play with this in a minute because this is a really key thing to change for people to be able to manage their money and to master it. Really interesting, Jackie. You speak of women having a money story. What does that mean? A money story is all of the beliefs, the decisions we make about money at a time we don't even remember. Um, Think about your dad, okay? Mm -hmm. When you were at home and growing up and your dad talked about money, what was his energy? Was it frightened, factual, or fun? Fun and factual. See, in my household, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. There was not a lot of facts about money that were discussed, and there wasn't any fun around those conversations. And especially when my parents split up, their conversations about money were frightening for me when I was really young. So that was part of my money story, is that money was something you didn't talk about unless you wanted to fight with somebody. You know, it was more volatile than politics or religion or any of those things that they say don't bring up in polite company. I was taught you didn't talk about money in polite company or anywhere else. So how did you overcome your money story? I started by recognizing that I had one. And that's why this is so key, not just for women, but especially for women, because we are taught not to make waves. And so if your money story is that money is an uncomfortable topic, you're going to be even less inclined. And so many women go into relationships, both personal, they get married, or in business without discussing money at all. So Jackie, what are your money rules, aside from the financial rules of banking and investing? Aside from banking, investing, and budgeting, I'll put them all on the side. My rule about money is get really comfortable and get comfortable with stepping out of what our culture says. Because we have a culture that doesn't really understand the concept of enough. It's not possible to have enough money because we're pushed with this message of more is always better. Have you ever heard that sentence here that says, if some is good, more is better? Of course. It's not true. It's not true, and it causes more people to fail in business than any other rule because they don't know what's enough. They don't know what's enough to invest in their business, and they don't know what's enough to take home. And so my rule is I want enough and a little bit more. And so that actually came from a book called Your Money or Your Life, and I highly recommend it to everybody. Get the book Your Money or Your Life by Vicki Robin because it will give them the foundation, it'll give them the structure to actually have a conversation about money that's a lot more comfortable. Thank you, Jackie. This has been so helpful. Now, how can people reach you? The easiest way to reach me is through my website. Very simple, JackieSimmons.com. And I have a gift for everybody there. Thank you for being with us. Allow me to introduce Fern Grace, co-owner of Abacus Web Services. Fern, you're active in the entrepreneurial community and the financial manager of your family business. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jennifer. Fern, please tell us about Abacus Web Services. Well, as you mentioned, we're a family-owned and operated business. We're a web design and development company. So we build websites. We work with small and medium-sized businesses on their SEO campaigns, social media. We have our own servers, so we host websites. We do reputation management, email services, and a lot more to do with any company's presence on the internet. So as it relates to finances, how in your family did you decide who's going to manage the finances? Well, when we started the business 20 years ago, it's our 20th anniversary, so we're really excited about that. But when we started 20 years ago, the responsibility of that and most of the work went on my husband, David, uh, because at the time, my daughter was young enough that I was taking care of her. 
So as we grew and as the business got busier, David needed to hand over a lot of that responsibility to me. So that's how I took it on. Did you have any financial background before you started the no, business? No, I didn't. How did you learn the financial intricacies of running a business? Well, at that time, I learned the bulk of it from my husband because he had already been an entrepreneur and had, at the time, over 20 years in business experience himself. Uh, but we also got in an accountant, and I also talked to other small business owners through my networking. What did you learn about finances that was surprising? Well, I think the most surprising thing I learned was the forward forecasting. You have to know where your business is headed, and part of that is doing that financial forecasting. So in all of this, did you experience any anxiety about having the responsibility of handling the finances? Oh, yes, I did. Just because of the lack of experience, if you will, that I had initially, I did have some anxiety over it. But I had a good support team to help me through that. I would imagine that there are occasional disagreements regarding how to manage the finances, whether it's with your business partner, which happens to be your husband, or with your family, which happens to involve your husband. So how do you handle those? Well, we talk it out, really. So with our business, technology is always moving so rapidly that there's always some new tool or technique, and David gets quite enthusiastic about that. But depending on where we are, is that something we can afford to do this month, or is it something we have to wait till next month? And then when we talk about our personal finances, it's to do with our daughter's college fund, or how well, uh, we did that particular month. Terrific. Fern, what advice would you give to women business owners desiring to master financial management in their business? I would say to create a good support system and to reach out to people, particularly like an accountant. We brought in a very strong accountant who will answer any question I have, no matter how silly it is. She also helps us with tax preparation for the year, but she'll also sit down and work with us on some of that business and financial forecasting. I would also reach out to other business owners, especially women entrepreneurs, who have been that, taken that journey themselves. Thank you, Fern. Uh, how can people reach you? Our, our website is abacuswebservices.com, or you can call us directly on 941-870-5343. I've asked Fern and Jackie back on set because I want them to share some final thoughts with our audience. Ladies, in a few words, what would you like our viewers to know about financial empowerment? Well, I think women entrepreneurship is very empowering, and I think women shouldn't be afraid to ask for support, whether it's from professionals, other business owners, or even their spouses. Jackie. When it comes to financial empowerment or any kind of economic empowerment, it starts with owning your ballpark understanding that this is your life, it needs to be your rules. And that's what most women entrepreneurs in the financial realm haven't figured out yet. They get to write their own rules, get a good team together, get a good sounding board, but actually own it. Because where you're gonna end up is where you're gonna end up, and it might as well be where you wanna go. That's terrific. Thank you both. This is Jennifer Lee for Financial Female TV. Thank you for joining us, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.